What is going on guys? Pro Player Apathy here back with a brand new video. Today we're going to be doing a best settings one because you guys hit 555 likes in my latest video. So here I am about to give you guys the best settings to have more FPS, more aim assist, more everything so you guys can dominate just like I do. And I have a really, really important settings that I'll be showing you. So make sure to pay attention and watch the whole, whole, whole video. So obviously before we go more into this video, this is going to be PC, PS4, Xbox, whatever you want. You know, you can adjust a lot of these settings and everything but obviously pc has more options so to start off my input device is controller i am in a cdl the cod world league and we are playing on pc controller so therefore i do use controller now to the important part the graphics full screen is a must please 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 use full screen do not use windowed win windowed window full screen whatever full screen for the best fps the best quality for the refresh rate we do got a 144 hertz i might upgrade to a 240 hertz eventually but for now we're rocking the 144 hertz always make sure your refresh rate is the same with your monitor because sometimes the settings will reset like you have a 144 hertz monitor but you're playing on 60. that's a no-no make sure you're playing on the best hertz you can be gameplay v-sync disabled menu v-sync disabled low latency disabled render resolution 100 now this is kind of important because some people might have this a little bit higher than they should be and this setting tends to get resetted randomly i think it, it, it happens when your display mode is like a window or something like that but do not have this very high obviously the higher you go the better the quality would be so if i'm at 150 the quality is going to look a lot better but it's going to work your computer a lot harder it's going to make you lose a lot of fps and you don't want that you want to have the most fps possible so always make sure your render resolution is pretty much on 100 and make sure it's, it matches your display re resolution so 1920 by 1080 display resolution 1920 by 1080 bam we're golden aspect ratio automatic and now to go to the display graphic settings so for colorblind modes i don't use any colorblind in this game because they're a little bit weird uh i did I have used them in the past they're i like to use the interface ones not the actual game but interface where it makes like the colors of the name tags a little bit different i might you know dabble maybe in the future but for now i just have a default field of view very 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 important setting i am rocking 110 right now I was rocking 100. Now, if you go to 80 uh, field of view, that's basically the default field of view for a console, and I guess default in general. Um, this field of view, I think, is not as good. It's not in, as impactful. You know, when you have a bigger field of view, you get to see more around the map. You, 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 it's better like spotting people, and I feel like it's easier shooting people farther away. And I think the higher the field of view, the more FPS you get. So you definitely don't want to have 80. You want to increase it to like 100. I, I say like a good a good spot is 100 to 110 is the field of view you kind of want to be in and it's what I really recommend because it's going to be you're going to see the game's going to just feel easier in general because you're going to be able to see more of the game more of the map another very important setting ADS field of view I do like affected more now I don't know if you guys have played independent but independent basically makes your gun aim in like at a default field of view so let's say I'm at 110 field of view but I'm on independent it's going to make it like if I'm aiming in like an 80 field of view, it's going to be really zoomed in and it kind of throws you off. Now, this can be kind of good, I guess, for long range engagements. But overall, I mean, you can still beam people with affected. So it's not really worth it. Um, you definitely want to stick to affected. I think affected is probably the best one. And a lot of pro players are using it because everyone knows how good it is. I think, heck, if you even go back to Warzone, like almost every Warzone player uses Affected, even the really good pros. So your ADS field of view is on Affected. Now for brightness, I like to play on a 60 brightness. I think the game is a little dark. So playing the default 50, unless you already have your monitor settings really high, I think you definitely should up it because look, it does. I don't see the logo until I'm like, six, like mid 60s. Like I can kind of see it at 58, 60. So I think 58, like high 50s, maybe 60s, is really good for brightness. Uh, for frame rate limit, I have it on limited. Now, I know you can cap it because why work your PC so hard while you're in the menu, whatever, all those things. To me, I don't know. My game gets a little buggy sometimes. I just said, screw it. I'm just going to keep it on unlimited. It's not that big of a deal for me. Now to the bigger settings. For texture quality, I do have it on low. I would recommend low or lowest. Uh, obviously, if you start going medium, high, or ultra, it works your computer very hard, and you're going to start losing a lot of frames. You want to stay at lowest or low. I like low because just for that a little bit extra quality, you know, you don't want it to be too too bad. Uh, mono quality, I think medium or high is the best. Now, obviously, um, if you go between low and medium, it doesn't really show like a change in the VRAM usage. Obviously, there probably is a little bit change. Um, but medium is probably the best if you have a super PC you can go high I feel like model quality is pretty important uh, to see like shapes of characters and shapes of people and seeing like kind of the models from far away a little bit easier 
um i have that on medium i do have hd game textures and models installed i don't think it really matters um because i'm not really you know playing the game at the highest quality or on 4k but i, I installed it either way uh 4k interface uh interface textures disabled special effects quality medium uh screen space reflection uh disabled like who cares about reflection object view distance high now this is another one of those settings where changing it doesn't really affect your v your your ram as much um and i feel like you seeing distance from far is kind of good i mean obviously you want like it, it doesn't really i think it doesn't really affect the character model with with this one but you know having like being able to see like a wall you know uh, like more um more like formed and sharp and then you can see the character's model out of like outside the wall or next to the wall a little bit easier you know it can be kind of beneficial so i just have it on high i recommend medium or high um uh, volumetric lighting low shadow quality low dynamic shadows disabled special effect shadows disabled weapon shadows disabled make sure you're putting all these things all these things are unimportant who the who the hell cares about some shadows you know shadows of a of a coca-cola bottle on the floor you know casting a shadow like who cares now but seriously this will you know hurt your ram a lot you want to disable and low all these settings because it's just going to make you get fps like lose fps for no reason because it's not a big deal at all for ray tracing now this is very 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 important listen up make sure all these three are disabled i had this on like medium or high and it made me lose like 30 fps it is very important to have all these three disabled enough more shadows and stuff like these settings do not matter like you want to have the best you want to have the best gameplay you want to have the best settings you want to have the best performance pc you know while you're playing the game especially at a competitive level or at a high level and you want to be if you especially if you want to be dominant you know so make sure this is disabled 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 uh dlss i have that disabled i i know you can kind of work with it but i just i from the things i heard i prefer disabled i think it's better disabled anti-aliasing um this is a this is an interesting setting now obviously having this enabled runs a little bit on your pc um i recommend lowest or low if you have a decent pc pc or a really good pc i would recommend running one of these two because the pros beat outweigh the con a bit like it does help the quality a decent amount and it doesn't really take too much off your fps like maybe five fps six fps and it's it's worth it obviously if you go too high then that's when it's gonna work your pc a little harder um but if you have maybe like not the best pc you're trying to you know suck as much fps possible and then just disable it but i play on low um it says right there smaa one x is low and it's what a lot of people recommend make sure i'm recording it good this time okay him for ambient occlusion quality disabled motion blur disabled motion blur quality disabled uh subsurface scattering disabled like scattering more for more realistic rendering of human faces like what like i, I want my fps buddy uh order independent transparency disabled effects on vram high another thing that you know higher transparency is is just not worth it honestly these these settings will help you just disabling or lowering them will help you get a lot more fps and it's just not worth it especially you know like i said if you're trying to be the best player you can be uh vram beats the targets default computer uh srgb and nvidia obviously has my display adapter now going to the audio really quickly i have my master volume at 90. Uh, i just like it slightly lower um music volume 20 don't really like the lobbies <laughs> music to be too loud i hate it at zero because sometimes it's too quiet Sound effects volume 100. Obviously, you want to be able to hear footsteps and whatnot. Dialogue volume. That's when your character calls stuff out. Uh, I like it a little bit high, but not too high where it's just, you know, taking over kind of the whole sound. To the next volume, I guess 100. Um, I do like high boost the most. Um, obviously, you want to have very loud um, presets because obviously, you know, you want to be able to hear a few step, uh, footsteps cues or, you know, when someone drops or jumps. And high boost, I feel like I hear really well. Um, you could probably put super bass um but yeah high boost is the, the play in my opinion hit marker sound effect yes keep that enabled now i think a lot of these things are very important uh some people maybe you know complain about them but obviously you want your crosshairs um shown hit marker visual shown uh, damage space marker shown ally hit health bar shown enemy health bar shown all these things you want to have them shown because they're pretty important and it definitely helps a lot and obviously i have my fps counter shown at the top left that's how you do that if you did not know now for the last thing which is going to be controller this is pretty important i'm going to break this down really quickly obviously input device controller i like to play on 6.6 i always recommend this to a lot of controller people don't play on too high of a sense um especially if you're trying to you know compete or like play at a high level um i recommend between five to like eight i would say play around those around that sense i play on 6.6 one basically 
I, I did a slight, slight lower down, like high 0.90s. I'm um, just kind of testing it and having fun. I do feel like it helps a little bit when it comes to, like long range shots. Um, but yeah, 661 basically. And then obviously my high zoom is a little bit slower. Um, 0.9 for my button layout. I am running tactical and flipped. I prefer shooting with L1 and R1 it makes it a lot easier for me. Controller vibration disabled. Um, all these stuff are pretty much default. One setting that I think is really good and really important to do is airborne mantle behavior. Now, I don't know if you guys get auto mantles all the time. It is the worst thing in the world. Make sure to turn this on to manual. You can even do a double thing you do on second press. So you have to press jump twice to mantle. But I've tried it before and I thought at first it was a good idea, but it, sometimes it messes. You have to like spam it and it kind of can mess you up. So make sure you put your auto mantle behavior on manual and then put it on press. Um, this is pretty much some all basic default stuff. Um, this is the next important part advanced um, stick like this. This is a threshold, right? This is the dead zone. This is a very important setting right here that a lot of people, you know, come to my stream all the time and ask me now for the left stick left stick. I do have it on zero. Um, this is obviously the movement stick. I think this is really important. Uh, if you have, I, I feel like it's hard to have like a, a stick drift on the left one. I, I don't think I've dealt with it much in the past couple years. So I have this on zero. I don't really have stick drift. It allow, It feels like the movement feels a little more fluid. Like my controller reacts and moves a little bit faster than having on like five or 10, you know? Um, so make sure to lower this to zero or like low numbers if you can. This is really beneficial. Um, maximum, I don't think it really matters as long as you have your lowest, the lowest possible. This is another important setting, um, right stick. I think it's really important that your right stick um, is lower as well, just so your, your controller uh, kind of reacts faster. Um, I think the default in MW was five. I think the default when I first logged into this game was like 10 or something pretty absurd. I have it on low two or like three. I try to have the lowest possible when I had it on zero. I did have a low stick drift, so I had to increase it. But if anything, try to keep it at five. Keep it low numbers. You want this these thresholds to be lower numbers so your controller kind of, you know, you reacts and just it's not like you have to like move it a little bit farther for it to, uh, to move and stuff. And then all of these have a basically default uh, auto move forward, disable auto sprint, uh, disable sprint behavior toggle, sprint cancel reload disabled. Some people like this. I've been playing co like the past two years of COD, maybe even three. Uh, this hasn't been a thing, so I got used to not being able to cancel with my sprint. So I kind of stopped doing it, kind of disable that. And then obviously you can put auto sprint if you want, but that's probably not going to be a thing in the CDL. All right, guys, I know the video took a little bit long, but those are all my settings to the game. Hopefully I was able to break down some things and kind of explain some things very quickly and briefly for you guys. Um, these are the best settings or one of the best settings you can use. And this is a lot of settings that the pro players are using. Um, I will be doing more tip videos in the near future. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And don't forget to check out my other videos of more tips and gameplay. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And don't forget to like. Yes, like, 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 like. No, but seriously, like the video, guys. Peace out. This has been your boy, Apti, and I'm out.